blessed day church as we're trying to rebuild to bounce forward from this global pandemic we're facing which is really challenging because of trials of frustrations and disappointments it's good to remind each other that god's promises are true he never changes and his faithfulness is more than good it's great Stop.
Good morning, Church. Muli tayo po ay uh, lumapit sa ating Panginoon at tayo po ay manalangin. Our most gracious Father in heaven, uh, we thank you for another day, Lord, that we are uh, given an opportunity to be in your presence. We thank you, Lord, for your continuous uh, protection and blessing sa bawat isa sa amin, Panginoon. That in spite of this pandemic, Lord, we see your hands working in our lives and in the lives of many people, oh Lord. Salamat po, Panginoon, sa patuloy mo pong biyaya sa amin. At patuloy namin idinadalangin sa iyo ang aming pong bansa. Ang aming pong bansa ay uh, patuloy na humaharap sa maraming mga krisis na bunga rin po, Panginoon, ito pong uh, pandemic, Panginoon. And that's why we, we continue, Lord, uh, to come before you and uh, intercede for our beloved nation because we want our nation to experience uh, your favor, your blessing, because we are part of this nation. And we pray, Lord, for our government leaders that you will give them wisdom, Lord, to lead our nation and uh, help them also to be able to coordinate to every local government, O oh God, especially in terms of controlling the spread of the virus, Panginoon. Lord, I pray for the quarantine facilities na patuloy mo pong uh, yung pagpalain nawa, at mag magkaroon ng uh, maayos na uh, isolation, Panginoon, sa mga may uh, karamdaman ng COVID at makontain po ito. And I pray for those who are in the isolation facilities that you will uh, meet them, you will encourage them, and may you heal them, Lord, sa kanila pong mga uh, pinagdadaan ng karamdaman. Lord, we pray for the medical frontliners. Uh, you know, Lord, that uh, sa oras na ito, our, our frontliners, our medical health workers are uh, decreasing, Panginoon, dahil po sa dami po ng mga cases at uh, marami rin po sa mga medical frontliners ay nagkakasakit. So I pray, Lord, na bigyan niyo po sila ng, uh, uh, ng kalusugan, Panginoon, magandang kalusugan. May you uh, protect them from this virus, Panginoon. And we're looking forward na wa, ito pong mga susunod na araw habang kami po ay nasa MECQ ay mag, uh, bumaba po, Panginoon, yung mga cases ng uh, dito pong COVID. And we pray, Lord, uh, for our economy, tulungan mo kami na makabangon muli. Patuloy, Panginoon, na uh, uh, mag-provide ka sa aming pong bansa ng mga opportunities. And we pray, Lord, for a vaccine, Panginoon, na talagang uh, magagamit po ng bawat isa at makakaabot sa bawat mamamayan para po... Uh, uh, hindi po magkasakit ng, ng COVID ang aming pong mga kababayan, Panginoon. Lord, we also pray, Panginoon, sa aming pong uh, mga, mga lokal na go, uh, part ng government po namin, Panginoon. And even, Lord, ang mga department ng aming pong bansa, Panginoon. Lord, marami pong mga issues of corruption, Lord, na nangyayari. Even during this time of pandemic, Lord. Lord, sa watain mo po, Panginoon. Huwag mo pong pahintulutan na patuloy na ang masasamang tao, Panginoon, ay gumawa ng, uh, ng uh, corruption, Panginoon, sa aming pong bansa. Lord, may you expose every corruption in every part uh, dito po sa aming pong bansa, Panginoon, anumang department dyan, Panginoon. Adalain ko po na hindi po mag-prosper ang, ang mga plano at gawa ng mga taong uh, patuloy, Lord, na nananamantala, Panginoon, sa kaba ng bayan. And Lord, tulungan mo kami na makabangon, Panginoon, ang bansang Pilipinas. Hindi lang po ang bansang Pilipinas, but even the whole world, Panginoon, mula po sa pandemic po na ito. And Lord, we also pray for your church because your church is your, your messenger, O God. The church is your, uh, your uh, spokesman, Panginoon, uh, your mouthpiece, Panginoon, dito po sa panahong ito. Lord, may we be sensitive as a church sa iyong kalooban. Tulungan mo po kami, Panginoon, sa aming pong ministeryo. Napakalawak, Panginoon, ang iyo pong gawain. At napakaraming mga tao nangangailangan ng, uh, uh, ng relasyon sa iyo. Sapagkat marami sa aming mga kababayan ay maaring nawawala ng pag-asa. Marami na de-depress, Panginoon. Nawawala ng trabaho. Nahihirapan sa mga sitwasyon pong pinagdadaanan. Lord, may you uh, give us opportunities, O Lord, to be a channel of blessings to our community. May we be able, Lord, to, to act, hindi lamang po manalangin, but also, Lord, to be part of the solution, Lord, para po makatulong sa iba't ibang mga sangay, Panginoon, ng aming pong bansa at maging ang mga taong nangangailangan, Panginoon. Lord, patuloy na mag-provide ka sa amin. Patuloy na pagpalaan mo po ang iyong mga anak. 
so that we will, we will continue to be a blessing to other people. And above all, Lord, may we be committed in our mission, Lord God, uh, to make disciples of all nations. Salamat sa mga nasisimulang mga trainings, Panginoon, sa aming church. And may we be able to, continue, uh, to uh, develop leaders, O oh God, uh, who will uh, lead people to you, Panginoon. I pray for your favor, Panginoon, sa aming mga gawain. Patuloy na kami po ay iyo pong katagpuin. Patuloy na ikaw ay mahayag sa aming pong mga buhay. Salamat po, Ama. We pray all of this in the powerful and mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Scared from all the bad news? Why not refresh yourself with us? Join our worship service every Sunday at 9 a.m. Followed by our Sunday school at 10 a.m. Can't wait for the weekend? Refresh midweek or even every day. Join Powerhouse every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. One more? Well, hey, we got you, fam. Join Ezra Institute of Theology in studying the Word of God deeper. Theology survey every Monday at 8 p.m. And hermeneutics every Thursday at 7 p.m. Daily devotions, Monday through Friday at 12 noon. That's good news, right? Well, like all good news, we need to spread it. So, why not start a Facebook watch party? Just follow these instructions. Online party? Oh no, we got something better. How about online fellowship? Join the next generation at NextGen Online Fellowship on August 29 at 2 p.m. Or the Millennials at Flux Zoom Fellowship at August 30 at 6 p.m. Few reminders that all other activities of the church are currently suspended until further notice. And you may continue giving through the following. On that note, let's continue to be vigilant and do our share in fighting the virus. Let's follow health guidelines and be very careful in handling unverified news. And lastly, the Bible says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So what are you waiting for? Worship with us here at GCF Santa Rosa. Good morning once again mga kapatid. A blessed Sunday sa bawat, um, uh, bawat isa sa atin. Salamat sa Panginoon sa panibago opportunity na muli tayo po ay uh, kakain ng pagkain spiritual. So dahil po tayo ay kakain ng uh, salita ng Diyos, ay, uh, I hope that we are ready mga kapatid. Ihanda po natin ang ating mga puso sa muli na pag-aaral natin ng salita ng Diyos. So ngayon po ay uh, third Sunday of the month of August. So uh, we only have two weeks at uh, mag-September na po, mag na at uh, panahon na mumuli ng, ng uh, Kapaskuhan. So uh, kumusta po kayo mga kapatid? Meron po bang mga changes or developments sa ating pong mga buhay? And I hope mga kapatid na Hindi lang lumilipas ano yung mga araw ano but uh, I hope that we are growing and becoming uh, productive sa ating pong uh, hindi lang sa ating mga trabaho but even in our spiritual uh, progress patuloy tayo nawa na lumalago sa ating pong Panginoon. So before I continue with our message this morning, nais ko pong uh, magbigay ng ilang mga announcements. Siguro iba po dito nabasa niyo na kanina sa ating pong uh, announcements but I just want to uh, uh, emphasize ito pong mga events po na ito. Last week, we started our powerhouse uh, via Zoom. And so, yun po yung first time natin na Zoom powerhouse. And praise God sa naging successful na turnout. Marami pong mga families ang nag-join. Ano? So, kung hindi po kayo naka-join last week, if you miss it, ay nais nice po namin kayo encourage na mag-join po this coming Wednesday. So, every Wednesday na po yan, beginning in, uh, at 7.30 p.m. At sa mga hindi po makakapasok sa Zoom, meron din po yung live sa GCF Santa Rosa uh, family uh, sa Facebook group. Okay? 
So uh, patuloy po tayong manalangin, idulog po natin sa Panginoon ang kalalagayan ng ating pong bansa, ng ating pong mga families. And also, isa pa pong announcement ay uh, ito pong uh, nakalipas na linggo ay nagsimula na po ang ating pong uh, training ng Ezra. So nagkaroon po tayo ng mga classes. So uh, pwede pa po kayong humabol. Ito po yung good news dahil nakakaisang uh, introduction pa lang po tayo. So this coming week, ay inaanyahan ko po kayo no, kung interesado po kayo na matuto at magamit pa ng Panginoon in terms of uh, teaching the Word of God or sharing it with with other people. So ito po yung mga pwede nyo pong enrollan na classes. So hermeneutics class uh, every Thursday, 7pm and theology survey to every Monday at 8pm. So uh, inaasahan ko po na kayo po ay mag enroll ano? Hindi lamang po ito basta dagdag kaalaman but this is a journey where we will be more uh, useful sa kaharian ng ating Panginoon. Especially now, mga kapatid, that things are getting getting worse. At sabi nga sa Biblia, uh, worse days are coming pa. Marami pang mga pwedeng mangyari na hindi natin inaasahan before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why we need to be prepared to uh, be used by God sa kanya pong uh, pagpapalaganap ng kanyang kaharian dito po sa lupa. So muli, magandang uh, umaga po sa atin. So tayo po muli ay uh, saglit pong pumikit and let's re- uh, prepare our hearts for the Word of God. Father, dalangin ko po na ihanda mo po ang aming mga puso. There are so many things that overcrowd our hearts. But this morning, Lord, we just want you to speak to us directly. May you uh, uh, speak to us. May you give us uh, sensitive hearts, O Lord. And may allow us, O God, to understand and apply your word in our lives. All of this we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen. Well, praise God. So last week, we talked about the good hand of God at natutunan po natin doon na ang Diyos ay patuloy po na kumikilos. Ano? We just have to recognize it. At napakahalaga po mga kapatid na doon sa pagkilos ng Diyos, tayo po ay mag-join. Sasali po tayo. And God uses people, He uses instruments to accomplish His redemptive purposes and plans dito po sa mundong ito, sa ating pong mga buhay. And that's why dapat always po tayong receptive sa Panginoon at tayo po ay uh, sensitive sa pagkilos niya sa ating buhay at sa ating church. Nalala ko, isa sa laging sinasabi sa akin ng aking uh, one of my mentors ay dapat laging may bagong uh, experience tayo sa ating Panginoon. Ano, dapat hindi ang ating mga ikinekwento sa ibang mga tao ay yung mga nangyari sa atin nung, nung uh, tayo bata pa, nung isang taon, o nung mga nakaraang taon. Dapat may mga fresh tayong encounters, fresh na pagkilos ng Panginoon sa ating buhay. So let me ask you this question. Have you seen the work of God recently? Sa buhay mo, o sa buhay ng family mo, or sa church? Nakita mo ba? Have you recognized it? Have you confirmed that it is really a work of God? Just like Nehemiah who uh, told in our last week's passage that the king granted him what he asked for the good hand of God was upon him. So he was able to recognize the work of God in the situation that he was facing. So kamusta po kayo mga kapatid? And let me tell you a very uh, good news. So uh, ito po ay magandang balita para sa ating lahat bilang uh, GCF Santa Rosa. As you know, uh, nito pong bago po nag-ECQ, nito pong March, ay nagkaroon po tayo ng plano na tayo po ay lilipat ng uh, another location for our, uh, as a place of worship natin. Ano? But uh, because of the pandemic, yung mga plano po natin na ay nahinder, hindi po uh, tayo natuloy. And ito po ang good news. Ano? God gave us a favor to be able to stay dito po sa Robinsons. Yan. So ito po yung isang announcement na gusto ko pong uh, ibalita sa lahat ng ating mga members and even do sa mga kasamahan natin, mga part ng GCF Santa Rosa family, even those who are abroad, gusto ko pong ibalita sa inyo that uh, we will be staying here sa Robinsons Santa Rosa because we uh, experience the favor of God So, yung pong management ng Robinsons became very, uh, what do you call that? Very considerate para po sa atin. And ito pa yung good news, mga kapatid. I'm sure you will be amazed because 
Ito pong Robinsons ay pinagkarooban tayo ng uh, uh, doon sa panahon na wala po tayong gatherings ay naka-waive po ang ating pong rental fee. Ibig sabihin, hindi po tayo magbabayad. Wala po tayong babayaran ng rental fee except for some ano lang po, uh, usage but tayo po ay wala pong babayaran during the time na hindi po tayo nag-gather. Okay? So, uh, this is a blessing and favor from the Lord, isn't it? Dahil ang Diyos ay patuloy na uh, sinusustain niya po tayo. At hindi ko po, uh, wala po akong pwedeng ibang i-attribute na gawa dito sa mga pangyayaring ito, kundi this is the work of God. So, when was the last time you recognized the work of God in your life, in your family, in the church? At kasabay po ng mga kapatid, nais ko po na tayo po ay patuloy pong manalangin. Kaya po, isa sa ating pong pinagtutuunan ngayon yung ating powerhouse. Kahit po tayo nasa ating mga tahanan, patuloy tayong manalangin. At patuloy na mararanasan natin ang pagkilos ng Diyos, ang provision ng Panginoon, ang protection ng Diyos sa, bu- sa buhay po ng bawat isa sa atin. Okay? So, uh, uh, speaking of the work of God, we will continue our message uh, doon po sa chapter 2 ng Nehemiah. And this time, I would like us to be sensitive doon po sa pag ng Panginoon sa atin. And that's why kayo po, ini-encourage ko po kayo, kung kayo po ay meron pong mga insights sa message, you can participate actually dito po sa ating live, uh, live streaming. So, pwede nyo pong ilagay sa comment section ang mga insights nyo po. Ano? So that we will know kung ano po yung mga learnings nyo po sa ating pong uh, pag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos. So, uh, I would like to encourage you to do that para naman po uh, makapag-exchange din tayo ng mga learnings. I'm sure di lang naman ako ang may mga nakikitang mga principles sa Biblia na, 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 na pwede nating matutunan. Even you, I know that as you read the Word of God, there are so many learnings and insights kayong nagigain sa ating pag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos. So, that's my encouragement sa bawat isa po sa atin. So, today, we will be talking about the work of God sa buhay natin. So last week, I, ta- I taught you how we can recognize the work of God sa ating mga buhay. And now, ito na po. Today, I would like to teach you how you will be able to join. So last week, recognize. Ano? Ngayon naman, how you will be able to join the work of God sa buhay natin o sa pag- yung pagkilos ng Diyos sa buong mundo. Okay? So our passage for today is uh, in chapter 2 of Nehemiah. So, dalawang, pa, dalawang verses lang po. Ito po ang aking pong babasahin. And uh, I want you to read it with me. So, beginning in verse 17. Then I said to them, You see the trouble we are in, how Jerusalem lies in ruins with its gates burned. Come, let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer suffer derision. So ito po si Nehemiah talking to the people of Jerusalem. So siya po naroon na sa Jerusalem, ano, nakarating na ho. And in verse 18, sabi niya, And I told them of the hand of my God that had been upon me for good, and also of the words that the king had spoken to me. And they said, this is what the Jerusalem people said, Let us rise up, and build. Try to imagine that. Nehemiah, nung una, si Nehemiah po ang nagsabi, let us build. Kung nakip, nabasa niyo po yung verse, uh, verse 17, but now, the Israel people, they embrace the vision that God has given to Nehemiah. So the title of our message this morning is this, Joining Hands for God's Work. Again, Joining Hands for God's Work. So God is continuously working in the whole world, mga kapatid. And we should not miss this outworking of God dito po sa buong mundo. Kinakailangan po maging sensitive tayo. We need to participate. We need to join it. At kinakailangan receptive po tayo sa salita ng Panginoon. We have, we have to be always ready uh, to uh, respond to the Word of God sa atin. Okay, so ito po yung ating pong message or overall message, ito pong ating passage. When God is in it, then nothing can stop it. Can you uh, say that with me? When God is in it, then nothing can stop it. So I'm talking about 
a vision or a plan. Whatever plan we have, as long as God is in it, God is in that plan, in that vision, this is very, very sure. Nothing, nothing will be able to stop it. Okay? So, uh, these are the key points na nais ko pong ituro po sa inyo ngayon pong umaga. Ito yung mga paraan para po tayo maging kabahagi ng pagkilos ng Diyos sa ating mga buhay. First, we need to be, uh, to set our hearts for God's work. So, you need to set your heart for God's work. Ihanda mo, ilagak mo ang iyong puso sa Panginoon para ikaw, para kumilos ang Diyos sa iyong buhay. And Nehemiah did it. Let's read verse 11 to 12. Sabi niya, So, I went to Jerusalem and was there three days. Then I arose in the night. I and a few men with me, and I told no one what my God had put into my heart to do for Jerusalem. So I highlighted, ito pong mga salitang ito, no? Yung what God had put into my heart. Ano po ang pinapakita nito, mga kapatid? God began a work sa puso po ni Nehemiah. And that's the reason why he went to Jerusalem, a very far place from the palace kung saan naroon si Nehemiah. He went to Jerusalem because he knows that God wants him to do something. God put it inside his heart. And this is the reality, mga kapatid. Whenever God begins to work, He always begins sa ating mga puso. So whenever God determines to do His work, ang unang niya pong kumikilos ang Diyos ay sa ating pong mga puso. And that's why ang ating pong mga puso, we need to be sensitive ano, sa Panginoon. And last week, isa yan sa ating mga major points. Ano, number one point natin last week, Be sensitive to God's leading. And Nehemiah was very sensitive. It began uh, as a burden. Kung naalala nyo, in chapter 1, it began as a burden. He heard the problem, the news, the critical need. He heard about the difficult situation of God's people in Jerusalem. And that burden began to consume his heart. At yung, yung burden na yon, mga kapatid, He turned to, lo- to the Lord in prayer. And God clearly revealed to him what he must do. At yan po, makikita natin yung sensitivity niya sa pagkilos ng ating Panginoon. At katulad po ni Nehemiah, mga kapatid, we need to be sensitive sa pagkilos ng ating Panginoon. And how can we be sensitive? We need to be men and women of prayer. Dapat po tayo ay manalangin. Sapagat kapag tayo po inananalangin, dun po ipinapahayag ng Diyos kung ano ang nais siya pong ipagawa sa atin. So, we always need to come to the Lord in prayer. And this is my question, once again, tinanong ko na po ito last week, but this is my question. When was the last time you came to the Lord in prayer, in complete submission sa Kanyang kalooban? And when you prayed, uh, you uh, recognized your complete dependence sa ating Panginoon. Mga kapatid, we need those unhurried moments with the Lord. This is the reality. If you want to be used by the Lord, we need to spend time with Him. We need to be sensitive sa pagkilos ng ating Panginoon sa ating buhay. And when we pray, mga kapatid, it does not necessarily oh, uh, mean na kinakailangan meron tayong agenda. Hindi po kailangan na lagi tayong may ilalapit sa Diyos kapag tayo po ay ilalapit sa Kanya. God misses us. He wants us to... Spend time with Him, just alone with Him, and thinking about Him, and allowing Him to continue to uh, show Himself sa ating mga buhay. God wants us to be sensitive sa Kanyang pagkilos. And ang Diyos, gusto niya po mga kapatid na tayo po ay lumapit sa Kanya, tayo po ay manalangin, at magpakumbaba sa Kanya. At aminin natin mga kapatid, yung ating pangangailangan sa Kanya, our complete dependence on Him. And I'm very sure, mga kapatid, God will respond. God will work sa ating mga buhay. So sa powerhouse, mga kapatid, gusto ko rin po kayong hamunin na kayo po ay patuloy pong mag-join sa ating pong mga prayer groups. Meron po tayo mga breakout prayer groups sa powerhouse via Zoom. So please join yung ating pong pananalangin. Okay, so let's continue. So siya po, sabi niya, nagpunta po siya doon sa Jerusalem 
Ano po ang layunin niya sa pagpunta sa Jerusalem? Hindi para mamasyal o magbakasyon o hindi dahil sa gusto niya lang na mag-live but because he has a mission to do. And how did he know it? Because God uh, gave uh, Nehemiah sa pamagitan ng kanyang puso yung naisang Diyos na gawin niya sa Jerusalem. And let's continue. Tinan natin kung anong mga kinaharap dito ni Nehemiah in verse 14. Then I went on to the fountain gate and to the king's pool, but there was no room for the animal that was under me to pass. And this is very surprising. This is very uncomfortable for Nehemiah. When he came to Jerusalem, there was no room for the animal na kanyang kasama. Siya po ay uh, wala pong mapatuluyan ng kanyang animal. So uh, he came from a very comfortable place and he went to a very uncomfortable place. Ano po ang pinapakita ito mga kapatid? Whenever we do God's work, we need to make necessary adjustments. Kinakailangan tayo po ay gumawa ng adjustment because hindi po tayo, hindi po ang Diyos ang mag adjust po sa atin. Tayo po ang mag adjust doon sa plano ng Diyos. And that's why even in, in our planning, sa lahat ng mga plano natin sa ministry, sa ating buhay, never ever ask God to bless your plan. Never. Don't ever come to God and say, Lord, please bless my plan because yung plano po natin, hindi po yun ang plano ng Diyos. Kapag tayo lang malapit sa Panginoon, sabi natin, Lord, I want to know your plan. And I want to do your plan. I want to respond to what you want me to do. So, I lay down myself to you, to your will, to your agenda. So, hinahayaan kita na gamitin mo ako para sa iyong plan. So, do the, the will of God. Respond to the will of God. At hayaan natin na gamitin tayo ng ating pong Panginoon. So there was no room. So this is uncomfortable. So binisita niya po yung buong uh, ni, uh, buong uh, Jerusalem and in verse 16 and the officials did not know where I had gone or what was I doing. And I had not yet told the Jews, the priests, the nobles, the officials and the rest who were to do the work. Ano po ang pinapakita dito mga kapatid? Merong hinahilad po po yung word na who were to do the work. Si Nehemiah, wala pa siyang pinagsasabihan ng kanyang gagawin. Ano? At sabi dito, malino sa kanya na merong siyang, may mga trabahong gagawin ang mga Israelites. Inlagay ng Panginoon sa kanyang puso. Yung plano ng pagre-rebuild nito pong uh, uh, Jerusalem Wall. And he knows that he cannot do it alone. And that's why he needs the help. He needs the help of people to be able to do uh, this mission from the Lord. And dito may kita natin mga kapatid, yung planning, ano? Of course, Nehemiah started in prayer. So, mahalaga po yan. Prayer, planning. Yung iba po kasi, planning muna bago prayer. Ano? Mali po yun, ano? Yung magpa-plano ka muna, meron ka na nakalatag sa Diyos. Tapos sasabihin mo kay Lord, Lord, mag-adjust ka doon sa plano ko. No. You pray first, and then you plan, and then you pursue. Pursue the plan that God has entrusted to you. And you share it with other people. So, dito, makita natin na kasama sa kanyang plano o sa plano na ibinigay ng Diyos kay Nehemiah na i-rally, encourage ang buong bayang Israel to participate and to join the work of God. And Nehemiah, uh, tinan natin sa mga susunod na mangyayari kung, kung uh, ano po ang gagawin po ng mga Israelites. Will they respond to the work of God? Will they join Nehemiah sa kanyang uh, plano o sa plano ng Diyos to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. Malalaman po natin in the second uh, point of this message, we need to share your heart for God's work. Kanina, kung naalala nyo, set. Yung unang word natin is we have to set our hearts for God's work. Another S, o sa, yung second S po natin is share. Kung ang Diyos ay kumilo sa iyong puso, sa iyong pananalangin, at nireveal niya sa iyo ang kanyang kalooban, ang susunod is ito po ay ibabahagi mo sa iba. But wait, before you share it with other people, kung napansin niyo po, si Nehemiah, hindi niya agad sinare sa, sa ibang tao. Tama po ba? Sinarili niya po muna yon. Siya po ay nanalangin sa Panginoon. At uh, patuloy siya naging sensitive. In-inspect, in-inspect niya po yung buong Jerusalem para makita niya kung ano yung mga kailangan gawin. And God revealed to him what he needed to do. So he was very sensitive sa kalooban 
at sa pagkilos ng ating Panginoon. So hindi agad niya shiner sa iba. And this is my question, why o bakit hindi agad shiner ni Nehemiah yung pong gawain na yon? Because he was inspecting it first. Ano gusto niya makita kung ano yung yung gagawin pong uh, trabaho. At makita natin dito that uh, after he was able to inspect Jerusalem, ito na po, ibinahagi niya po sa, ka, sa mga uh, Jewish people or sa mga uh, mamamayan sa Jerusalem kung ano yung ipinapagawa ng Diyos sa kanya at sa kanila. Kaya po natin in verse 17, Then I said to them, You see the trouble we are in, how Jerusalem lies in ruins with its gates burned. Come, let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer suffer derision. So this is Nehemiah speaking. Ang sabi niya sa mga taga-Jerusalem, Let us come, let us build the wall. And what did uh, the uh, Jerusalem uh, community uh, say in verse 18? And I told them, binagit ni Nehemiah, the good hand of God, or I told them of the hand of my God that had been upon for good, and also of the words that the king had spoken to me, and they said, pansin niyo po yung word, from I said, come, let us build. They, referring to the Israel people, they said, let us rise up and build. So, there is a vision, and the vision uh, from the Lord, ibinahagi ni Nehemiah sa, uh, sa mga tao, and the people embrace the vision. Now, this is my question. Why do you think the Israel community respond to that challenge of Nehemiah. If you were part of the, of the community of uh, Jewish uh, people during that time na kausap ni Nehemiah, will you take part of that work? Will you join the work uh, that Nehemiah had shared with them to do? Will you join, will, will you join Nehemiah? Uh, what about your answer, mga kapatid? Ano sa tingin mo? Mag-join ka ba doon? But, It could be, may, pwede tayo maging negative dun eh. No? Pwede natin isipin na, naku, Nehemiah, paano ba tayo, parang imposible yung ginagawa mo na yun. Tinan mo naman yung sitwasyon natin, no? wala tayong resources. Pero tinan nyo, mga kapatid, nag-participate po yung mga mamamayan ng Jerusalem. And I found two reasons, two reasons why Nehemiah was able to convince the people of Jerusalem. The first reason, balikan natin yung verse 17, is this. And sabi niya, Then I said to them, You see the trouble we are in, how Jerusalem lies in ruins with its gates burned. So nakita niya mismo yung kalunos-lunos sa kalagayan, hindi lamang po ito theory, but he knows what the people is going through. Okay? So he knows what is uh, happening to them. And sabi niya, Come, let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we, pasin niyo yung word na we, isinali niya yung kanyang sarili, ano, that we may no longer suffer derision. Remember, he was in the palace, and yet, he was being part of uh, ito pong suffering na pinagdadaan. Kasama, kasama siya o kas, kabahagi siya. Siya ay nakikibahagi dun sa pinagdadaanan o sa suffering ng mga uh, Israelita. Ano po ang pinapakita dito, mga kapatid? Why was Nehemiah able to convince the people of Israel to join the work of God. Nakita natin dito, mga kapatid, yung uh, concern ni Nehemiah. There is genuine concern for the people of Jerusalem. And if you feel yung concern sa'yo, di ba, you, you would respond. You know that Nehemiah went there not for his political agenda, not for his personal agenda, but because of responding to the work of God. So si Nehemiah po mga kapatid, he made himself available even though nado siya sa malayong lugar. At naramdaman po ito ng bansang Israel nung siya po ay nagpunta doon. Naisip siguro ng mga tao po sa, sa Israel, etong si Nehemiah, ang ganda ng kanyang posisyon, pero siya ay nagtungo dito para tayo tulungan. And that's the reason why they were convinced and they were persuaded by Nehemiah to join the work of God in Jerusalem. Now, another thing na makikita natin is in the next verse, verse 18, And I told them of the hand of my God that had been upon me for good. 
So ano po yung kinuwento ni Nehemiah? Kinuwento niya how the king gave him the favor para po buuin muli ang templo o oh, ang uh, ang wall of Jerusalem. Sabi niya dito, kinuwento ko sa kanila kung ano yung ginawa ng Diyos sa akin and also of the words that the king had spoken to me. So yung hari, si King Artaxerxes, kung an- yung ano yung ginawa ng na favor ng hari sa kanila, binahagi po ni Nehemiah po yun. And when they heard that, tinan yung sabi, and they said, let us rise up and build. So they uh, receive yung pong, uh, uh, they embrace the vision that God has given to Nehemiah. Why? Ito po ang nakita kong principle dyan, pangalawang principle. They recognize that God is in this vision. God is in it. And they want to join God's work. They want to be part of that uh, vision. So si Nehemaya, ibinahagi niya po, ito pong uh, mga, uh, pang, ito pong mga, uh, yung challenge o yung pong vision ng pagtatayong muli ng Jerusalem. So, andun yung, yung uh, sharing, ano, he shared his heart uh, to the people. So, makikita po natin dito yung pong uh, kahalagahan, mga kapatid, ng uh, teamwork. We need people to join us, mga kapatid, dito po sa gawain po ng ating pong Panginoon. Because Nehemiah could not do it alone. Sabi nga po ni uh, John Maxwell, uh, tuloy ko lang po yung verse 18, ano, sabi dito, So, ito po nangyari, they strengthened their hands for the good work. They were convinced, they were encouraged, they were empowered to do the work of God. Okay? So let's see, ito po sabi po ni John C. Maxwell, Teamwork makes the dream work, but a vision becomes a nightmare when the leader has a big dream and a bad team. So yan po ay sabi po ni John Maxwell, whenever we have a dream but we do not have a team, then it is a nightmare. Why? Because wala tayong katuwang. Kaya kailangan po ibinabahagi po ang, ang pagkilos ng Diyos sa ating pong, sa ibang mga tao. And si Nehemiah po, he, uh, he invited the people who are like-minded. Yan, so pakita ko po sa inyo itong isang picture po na ito. No? Dalawang bata and they see, kung makita nyo po, pareho, nagtutulungan po sila, they have the same vision na buuin itong snowman. And we need like-minded people who are willing to join the work of God sa ating pong mga buhay. So, napakalaga po mga kapatid ng, uh, ng ating pong cooperation and unity as a church. If we want to experience the work of God sa GCF Santa Rosa, then we need to work as a team. Mga kapatid, never ever think ng ating mga kapatid sa Panginoon ay mga katunggali natin sa ministry. No, we are all part of this. We are in this together. We are one. And it is not about you or it is not about me. It is about God's work. That's the reason why we want to join hands together. And when we when I say join hands together, it means, mga kapatid, we have to get rid of our personal agenda. Let's just allow the Lord to work sa ating buhay, sa ating iglesia. And that means we need to get rid of our selfishness. Alisin na po natin yung mga mali nating pananaw patungkol sa isa't isa. Tanggapin natin ang isa't isa at tayo po ay maging handa na mag-work together. Because when we work together, mga kapatid, that is how we can accomplish the work of God. We need to be together. We need to join hands together, mga kapatid. And that's why ito po ang challenge ko, mga kapatid. If you had issues before with each other, I don't know what issues you had before, mga kapatid, or we had before. But this is my challenge. Let us move on. Kung kayo po ay mayroong problema sa relasyon nyo sa isa't isa, ang challenge ko po, mga kapatid, let us move on and let us move forward for the work of God. Tapusin na po natin kung ano man ang ating mga alita. Wag na, wag na nating paliitin ang ating pong mundo. Hayaan natin na kumilos ang Diyos sa ating mga buhay. At wala pong mangyayari kung tayo po ay hiwa-hiwalay. Kung tayo magkakanya-kanya. At ito, sarili, ito yung direksyon ng isa, ito yung direksyon ng isa. No, we cannot succeed in the ministry if we have that mindset. We need to forget our selfish agenda, to neglect our selfish agenda, and allow the Lord, the Lord 
allow Him to work sa ating mga buhay. And that means, mga kapatid, kinakailangan natin ng isa't isa. Kailangan natin magtulungan. We need to be united. Lalo sa panahon ng pandemic, hindi po ito ang panahon para yung sarili natin ang iisipin lang natin. Lagi natin iisipin po ang iba. Isipin natin ang iglesia. Isipin natin ang mga kapatid po natin sa ating Panginoon. So yan po, bahagi po tayo. We are, ito po ang challenge ko, we are in this together. And these people, they were able to accomplish the task because they are one, they forgot the past, or pwede na, andyan pa rin yung nakaraan, pero they moved on and they, they, they did new, new things. Yan po ang isang uh, katangian po ng growth or paglago. Meron pong pagbabago. Merong bagong action tayo na gagawin. Maraming hindi pa nila nagawa ito before, but now they are able to do it because they are willing uh, to, uh, they are open for new things. So, nakita natin dito na nakibahagi po ito pong mga tao. And si Nehemiah ho, he was able to challenge them. Why? Because there is vision. And kapag po merong vision, ang mga tao po mga kapatid ay nagjo-join. Kapag ka nakita natin na merong magandang layunin po. Sabi nga po ni uh, Edmund Chan, let me quote him dito po sa isang uh, sinabi niya po sa kanyang aklat, A Certain Kind. People are not waiting for an easy vision. They are seeking for a worthy one. Yan po ang hinahanap po ng mga tao. Vision. Because when there is vision, there is direction. We know where to get there. At tayo bilang iglesia, ano ba ang ating vision? We see transformed lives and communities through our Lord Jesus Christ. But we want to make it specific. We want to see families who are transformed, who are built up by the Lord Jesus Christ. Maaari mga kapatid, maaari na hindi pa natin na itatayo ang ating sariling building. We had planned it many times before. And I understand if parang tayo po ay nawawala ng pag-asa about that, but this is my challenge. Maaari na sa oras na ito, kaya hindi pa yung ibinibigay ng Diyos sa atin, hindi pa natin ibinibuild yung kanyang, yung uh, ating pong building, is because God wants us to build up each families, each family of Jesus Santa Rosa. Walang may iwan. No one is left behind. So this is my challenge. Ito po ang vision na inilalagay ng Panginoon sa akin para sa simbahan po, sa, sa GCF Santa Rosa. We need to build up our families. No one is left behind. Our children, uh, yung male, uh, yung, yung, yung mga kalalakihan natin, kat- katatayan, kat- kananayan, at maging yung mga kabataan. We are joining hands together and we want to seek God and we want to know Him. And that vision, I, I think, is pro- uh, possible. Is it Difficult? Yes, it's very difficult para lahat ng pamilya ay maabot. But is it possible? Is it possible for us to be to build up our families? We cannot do it on our own, but we need the work of God sa ating pong mga buhay. So, this is my challenge, mga kapatid, because if we have one vision, mga kapatid, we will not compete with each other, but we will help each other para ma-achieve po natin yung vision. Tama po ba? Yun po ang layunin po ng vision. So we have to share it with the people who are like-minded. So uh, that's the second, yung share. No, yung una po ay, ano nga yung unang S natin? We need to set our hearts. And we need to share our hearts for God's work. So uh, ito po muli, basahin po muli natin yung ating message. When God is in it, then nothing can stop it. So let's go to the third principle na nais ko pong ituro po sa inyo. We have to steady our heart for God's work. Steady. So, again, set, share, and steady. Pag sinabing steady, we, you have to fix your heart. You have to focus. Yung yung puso ay huwag mo pong hayaan na ma-distract. Okay? Because there are so many distractions around us para hindi natin magawa yung kalooban ng Panginoon. Dito, makikita natin yung mga distractions na pinagdaanan ni Nehemiah in verse 19. But when Sanbalat, kontrabida to, no? the Horonite, and Tobiah, the Ammonite, servant, and, and Jishim, the Arab, heard of it, narinig nila ang mga plano ni Nehemiah, they jeered, us, they jeered at us and despised, despised us. So hinamak nila si Nehemiah at ang bayang Israel. And they said, 
What is this thing that you are doing? Are you rebelling against the king? Andun yung kanilang pag, uh, pandalait. Ano? Ano, yun? ano sa tingin nyo yung ginagawa nyo? Tinan natin kung anong naging response ni Nehemiah sa kanila. Nagpa-apekto ba si Nehemiah sa kanila? Itong ang sabi ni Nehemiah. Then I replied to them, The God of heaven will make us prosper and we, His servants, will arise and build. That, but you have no person or right to claim in Jerusalem. Makita natin dito that Nehemiah's heart was fixed. It was steady. It was focused on the Lord and His agenda, His work, that nothing can hinder Him. Nothing distracts Him. And I hope that that is also our attitude sa mga nangyayari kaganapan sa ating buhay, sa ating iglesia ngayon, mga kapatid. May we not be distracted. May we not be... Uh, Uh, may, may we not lose heart. May we not get paralyzed by fears. Because yung mga, yung mga takot po natin ay kadalasan po nakaka-apekto para hindi natin magawa yung vision natin, yung plano ng Diyos para sa atin. So, we should not be paralyzed by fears. Do not let our fears overthrow our vision. Huwag po natin haya na ang takot ang siyang sumira sa ating uh, sa plano ng Diyos para sa ating mga buhay. But we have to be strengthened by the reality that God is with us. We need to be confident in God sa kanyang kapangyarihan. As I told you kanina, when God is in it, nothing can stop it. Because when we are pursuing God's agenda, mga kapatid, ito pong reality. When you are pursuing God's agenda, there is nothing you should fear. Because God's available resources, God's sustenance, His grace, His mercy, His limitless provision will be upon you and me. Kailangan lang po tulong-tulong tayo. Let's depend on the Lord and have confidence in Him. Patuloy tayong umasa sa Kanyang gagawin sa atin pong mga buhay. Huwag po tayo magpa-apekto sa mga negatibong nangyayari. Although yes, We might be affected sometimes because ayaw din naman natin na nakapigit mata tayo sa mga nangyayari sa ating paligid. But we, in, in the midst of this situation that we are experiencing, mga kapatid, we need to have a fixed eye sa ating Panginoon. Sa Kanya tayo nakafocus. Mari nakikita natin na problema, pero lagi po tayong tititig, titingin sa Panginoon, sa Kanyang presensya dahil Siya po ang ating pong lakas. Siya po ang tutulong sa atin para magawa po natin ang ating misyon at patuloy na siya ay mapapurihan sa ating mga buhay bilang isang iglesia. Paparating na po ang ating Panginoong Jesus. And this is my challenge, mga kapatid. Jesus is coming again soon. And we need to get ready and we need to accomplish the mission that the Lord has entrusted to us. And that is to make disciples of all nations. And that is the only... only uh, thing, mission na atin pong, kumbaga, yun yung pinaka-mission natin na sa church. Hindi lang tayo, but the whole church of Jesus Christ. At patuloy tayong makiparticipate doon, mga kapatid. Mag-join po tayo sa mga growth groups. Makibahagi tayo sa mga gawain kung paano tayo lalago. We have to be available sa mga pagsasanay, mga kapatid. Makijoin po tayo, mga kapatid. Nais ang Panginoon na tayo po ay gamitin sa kanyang gawain. And again, ito po ang ating pong mensahe. When God is in it, then nothing can stop it. When God is in it, then nothing can stop it. Do you feel uh, discouraged by what is going on with your family? Do you think that you, you, are, you are not able to influence your family or the people around you, your friends? Mari po natin gawin ang ginawang strategy ni Nehemiah. Bakit nakumbinsi niya yung mga tao to join him to do the work of God? Because there was genuine concern. Andun yung kanyang compassion. Andun yung kanyang heart. Andun yung care niya. Even sa ating pong mga anak. Ito pong payo ko sa, inyong mga, sa mga magulang. Wag na wag niyo pong pipilitin na parang robot ang inyong mga anak na mag-attend lang sa gawain. You need to encourage them, but don't ever force them. Show to them your genuine care. 
na totoong nagmamalas sa akin kayo sa kanila. At mararamdaman po nila yon. And secondly, let God work in your life as a proof, as a testimony to them that you have that intimate walk with the Lord. Allow the Lord to work in you. And as they see the work of God, the hand of God in you, they will join you. Even your friends, mga kapatid, don't force them. Encourage them. Pray for them. But above all, mga kapatid, live a life that will be a demonstration of God's work. And as they see the work of God, the evident work of God in your life, then they will be encouraged to join you. And they will say, Sinanay, kitang-kita ko sa kanya, kumikilos ang Diyos sa kanyang buhay. I want to join that. I want to be part of, it, of the work of God sa buhay niya. Let's pursue the work of God in our lives. And so that if you, are, you feel alone, just like Nehemiah, in leadership, leadership is a lonely task. Sabi nga ni, ni Edmund Chan, gusto ko lang encourage ang ating po mga leaders. I want to read ito pong uh, statement from Edmund Chan. Leadership is a lonely task. Why? Bakit po lonely task? Sabi ni Nehemiah, sure, good leaders are in company of good people who form their leadership teams. Totoo naman, ang mga leaders, marami mga kasama, but the leadership task, sabi nga dito, nonetheless, leadership is a lonely task because there are certain things that leaders alone must do. One of these is to determine a vision from the Lord for the people they lead. And that's why it is a lonely task. And Nehemiah felt the loneliness He felt he was alone when he was in the presence of God and he felt kung gaano kalaki yung trabaho. And he was overwhelmed by fear, perhaps. But he went to the presence of God and acknowledged, Lord, I am dependent on you. You are all that I need. And I know, Lord, that you are able to make this miracle. I believe that God can make miracle in your life if you will just surrender to Him and allow Him to do His work, His redemptive work for you and for your family. Trust Him. Come to Him. Listen to Him. Spend time with the Lord. Just you and God. In silence. Allow Him to show, show you what is the condition of your heart. And allow Him to work, to put inside your heart what He wants you to do so that His redemptive plan will be accomplished through you and through the people who are with you. And in the, this is my prayer for Jesus Santa Rosa. May we all be willing to join God's work. Alisin na po natin ang ating mga selfish agenda. And let's begin to seek God. And may we allow Him to work powerfully sa ating iglesia. Let us come to the Lord in prayer. Father, Truly, O oh Lord, when God is in it, then nothing can stop it. And we know, Lord, na nais mo po kaming gamitin, Panginoon, para sa iyong gawain. Lord, tulungan mo kami na maging sensitibo, na maging handa, Panginoon, na tumugon sa iyo pong naisin, sa iyong kalooban para sa aming pong mga buhay. Tulungan mo po kami, sa iyo, sa iyo kami nagpapasako, Panginoon. Patubayan mo po kami at patuloy na ikaw ay maluwalhati sa buhay namin bilang iyong iglesia. Ama, marami pong salamat. Marami pong mga inaayos ka sa aming mga family. Maybe this is the time you are helping families, Lord God, and parents to disciple their children. Lord, help them. Help each one of us, O oh God, to stand, O oh Lord, sa katotohanan ng salita mo. Panghawakan namin ito. And to, may we fix our hearts for you, O oh God. Because we know, Lord, na may plano ka sa aming buhay. Hindi ka pa tapos sa amin, Panginoon. And Lord, maybe you have just started at nagsisimula ka pa lang, Panginoon, sa pagkilos mo sa aming mga buhay. Lord, we do not want to be distracted. We want to focus on you sa kalooban mo po sa aming pong mga buhay. Salamat po, Ama. Ito po ang aming dalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Salamat po muli, mga kapatid, sa inyong pakikibahagi sa ating pong gawain po ng pagsamba. And I hope Uh, to see you again next Sunday. Tayo po muli ay manalangin at sa Kanya na makapag-iingat sa inyo upang hindi magkasala 
at makapagharap sa inyo ng walang kapintasan at may malaking kagalakan sa kanyang kaluwalatian. Sa iisang Diyos na ating tagapagligtas, sa pamagitan ni Kristong Panginoon natin, sumakanyang kapurihan, ang karangalan, ang kadakilaan at ang kapangyarihan mula pa nung una, ngayon at magpakailan paman. Amen, amen, amen. God bless po mga kapatid.